Okay, welcome back to the mom life hack stage. If you were just at the women in media session, I hope that you enjoyed that. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Carly Silberstein. I am a mom to a beautiful 16 month old and I am also the CEO of Redstone Agency, which is an event management agency based here in Toronto. And we have been working with clients to produce virtual events, similar to the experience you're having today with MomFest. And right now I am joined by Emily Edwards, the founder of The Good Birth Co and Cheyenne Scarlett. And they are going to talk to us today about how to unbury your birth experience. So without further ado, I will hand it over to the experts to carry on the conversation. Welcome ladies, thank you for being here and over to you. Awesome, thank you so much, Carly. I am going to start by getting our screen shared with our presentation here. And then we will get to the introductions of who we are and why we're here and what's going to happen today. So um, I will just double check every, um, Cheyenne, you can see that okay? Yep. Perfect. So we're here today to talk about how to unbury your birth. And like Carly said, my name is Emily Edwards and I'm joined today by Cheyenne Scarlett. Um, my, like I said, my name is Emily Edwards. I am uh, a nurse by trade and I consider myself a full spectrum birth story expert. So I'm a li lifelong birth nerd. Um, my professional background is in healthcare, in planning, education, and leadership. Um, I'm a mom to a whack of brilliant kids. So I have an eight year old, a five, almost five year old, a year and a half old, and I am a mom to um, twins who we lost around uh, 18 weeks a few years ago. And I've birthed in a whole bunch of different ways with a bunch of different outcomes. And I'm also learning how to live with a chronic illness on top of being a mom. So I have a lot of random experience that I bring to the table. I am super excited to introduce uh, Cheyenne Scarlett who is, her background is in early childhood education. We actually happened to go to the same college uh, different times, but uh, same same place. Um, she has her, she's just finished her master's. Um, and that's why I have, I'm so excited to talk to her today about her major research paper. So she is a maternal health care advocate. Um, she has an interest in, especially around different care provider experiences. Um, she is a storyteller and an administrator over at Black Births of Toronto. She's a mom to two biological children and one stepchild. And she's also interested in studying the long-term impacts of quality, um, of the quality of birth experiences. And so why we are, we're here today is to talk about how to unbury your birth. So that's the process of discovering the power of your birth story. Um, so when I learned about the opportunity to uh, connect with Cheyenne, um, I was thrilled. I am an academic at heart, um, and I, I really and genuinely love uh, talking about data and in the sense of the, through the lens of lived experience. So I think there's so much value in knowing what you know, with other people's experiences are and how they relate to, to the world around us. So in terms of um, discovering the power of your birth story, I'm going to challenge you right now. Um, you don't have to answer in the chat if you want to, that's great. If not, uh, don't worry about it, but just think and reflect on this question. Do you still feel some sort of disappointment about your birth? This can be on a spectrum of a mild kind of, eh, I wasn't happy with it, but it wasn't that bad to something of a severe birth trauma that you're carrying around still. Um, so like I said, I want you to reflect on that because the prevalence of negative birth experiences are very high. So they range in Canada from 6.2 to 19.6%, depending on where you are, um, the average being 9%. So when you look at it through the lens of that being one in every 10 moms, I really think that the numbers are higher. And as we ex um, continue dis our discussion, that this morning or this afternoon, I should say, we're going to find out some more truths about that and how you can learn more about how to unbury that experience for yourself. We're going to be talking specifically and having this conversation around um, Cheyenne's own research paper, which was the 
birth um, experiences of Black mothers in childbirth. And I've butchered that, Cheyenne. I will let you, I've mixed all of the words around. <laughs> um, but like I mentioned, my love is, I love research and especially qualitative research, which is the experience, the not that the hard numbers, but the the stories of people. And Cheyenne's research does an incredible job of highlighting the experiences of 30 different women who had given birth in the GTA um, within the, the recent past. So Cheyenne, this is where I am so excited to finally just jump in and talk to you about these things. Um, you know, why did you opt to take the qualitative approach in terms of your research paper? What did you think it brought to the table of knowing more about birth? Yeah, so I think qualitative uh, research is really important because it allows us to humanize the people that we're researching. Um, quantitative research is usually those numbers and however many percent had this and that. And it's easy to just forget that, you know, those numbers are actually represent real people. Um, so, you know, Black people and women in general are often not thought of as human and we need to humanize these stories and these experiences and, and to bring those stories into academia because our society really values that and those stories presented in any other way would probably be ignored. I think that that is incredible and again, tying the fact that the numbers we see and hear those percentages I gave those are real people at the other side of it. And I think, you know, we're here today at MomFest and we're speaking to an audience full of moms. And I think it's so, so important that we remember each one of you today has brought a story with you. And I hope you find, um, you know, something of yourself in our discussion today. Um, in particular, Cheyenne, you focus on through the lens of the critical race theory. Um, that's the one of the theories you you use within your paper. I'd love to know more about why you chose that and what you feel it brings to the understanding of um, you know birth experience as as a whole, but also specifically around this kind of research and information you're starting to gather. Yeah, so critical race theory is really really interesting and very in depth. Um, Theory, but I think the main um, three tenets that are really important for this um, would be social construction, constructivism. So reminding us that there's no biological reason or basis for how we treat different races differently. Um, and there's, there's no reason for it. Um, and then the other two that are really important is intersectionality and storytelling. So intersectionality allows us to see the differences between how people of the same race and the same gender, in this case, black women, experience the same phenomenon of childbirth differently. Um, so think, for example, a rich, um, a well-educated, um, employed, married, uh, middle-aged black woman and compare what you think her experience might be to um, someone who is poor, homeless, uneducated, single, teenager, unemployed, who is also a Black woman, and that how their experiences would differ. Um, so we know that we can't, there's no one Black experience, that we can't just say this is it. Um, so intersectionality really allows us to see how those other areas of people's lives come together um, to create who they are and, and how they see the world and how the world sees them as well. Um, and then, of course, the storytelling. Um, again, like I said, it's really important to see, you know, these people as people and not just a number. And that we, we recognize that these stories are coming from people who may have given birth in the same hospital as us or whose children may grow up to go to school with our children. Um, and, you know, just reminding us that this happens in the GTA, in our backyard in the last three years. So if this is not just, oh, you know, if it happened in the past, don't worry about it. Like, no, this happened, you know, in 2020, in 2019. And it's really important um, to, to keep that at the forefront. Absolutely. And, you know, again, coming back to today, and we have moms who likely have given birth within that window themselves. And um, I think it's, again, really important that we we understand that by understanding our story and telling our story that we are going to begin 
connecting to other human beings and being able to heal through that. And so it brings me to my last question on this slide is, how else does sh storytelling show up in your work as a birth worker, as a researcher? Um, where else do you see it? Yeah, so it, it happens anytime, you know, when you, if you see a friend on the street or, you know, you're in a coffee shop and you see a baby and then, you know, those conversations come up at any time and, you know, your friend finds out they're pregnant and then you go to them and you say, this happened to me, you know, like we are always telling stories about, about our experiences with reproduction and, and what that meant to us and, you know, what scared us and what was great and what was bad. And, you know, we're always telling stories right so it it happens all the time um this particular study i i did this research by asking tell me about your birth experience and then you know i was talking to to women for over an hour and they're telling me their stories right so again like it's very there's shared experiences there was difference there's there's similarities um but overall like it they all you know had a baby and like that, that it was what springs them together, right? Exactly. And it's kind of funny to wrap this this up was our kind of first chat uh, was, how are we going to keep this to a half an hour? Um, in the sense of we we both are storytellers and story keepers and love to take this opportunity to keep the conversation going. So to know that we're speaking in front of so many moms and not opening up the floor to hear stories is, is a challenge in itself. So I really, again, I hope this conversation is starting to spark some of your own stories and getting uh, opening up the idea to sharing them. We're coming next to something um, we're calling guidance for others. So that's the idea of community wisdom. Um, I am here because I am a student of Alana's. I, I love the way she builds community and I think the power of community is evident here today, but also um, especially through birth. Um, I'm a believer that, you know, of working smart, not hard. There's no reason why we continue to reinvent the wheel and go through the same challenges. Um, when someone has done it before us. So I think by bringing these stories together, plus my core belief in, you know, that birth is something that is experienced. It's a reproductive phenomenon where if you have a baby, you have a some sort of shared experience. And I also want to address if we have moms today who um, have their, their babies have come into their lives in different ways, I don't want to exclude you. Um, and there's other phenomenal ways to share your stories too. I just wanted to throw that in as an aside. Um, and I also think there's a tremendous benefit in honest preparedness. So that's when, again, we share those stories that are good, bad, and otherwise. They're the tough ones, they're the scary ones, they're the joyful ones, they're the sensual ones, they're the healing ones. There's so many experiences on this spectrum that I think it's a disservice to our friends and our family and the people around us for not sharing each one of them because we never know when someone is going to share a very similar experience. Um, so for Cheyenne, I am dying to know, um, again, as your, your paper was structured, there were, you discussed factors contributing to positive birth experience. Um, and within that, um, there was a theme of wanting to give advice for other mothers. Uh, based on that, what can you offer other mothers as a result of these interviews? So given this chance with so many moms in the audience, perhaps some of pregnant moms, maybe newly postpartum, um, how can you share or what can you share of those stories that you think um, would benefit these women today? Yeah, so this advice did come from a group of black women, but I think that it can go for everybody and anybody um, about to experience or had experienced um, birth, you can take this advice. Um, number one um, was choose your healthcare provider wisely. Um, and remember that like you're allowed to do whatever you like. You are allowed to be selfish in this experience. It's not about anybody else. Um, it's about you and what you need and you deserve whatever you need and whatever you want. Um, so make sure that your your healthcare team is somebody that you trust. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of people suggested that they would have preferred um, continuity of care. So having the same person that cared for them throughout their pregnancy to also be attending their birth 
um, because in many cases, um, particularly with OBs, like that's not possible. It's just whoever's on call is what you get. Um, and then another thing, so yeah, sorry. Um, if you don't like your care provider, get a new one. That is like, there's no, no questions asked. If you don't like them, get a new one. Um, even if you're already in labor, it is never too late. Just you deserve to have the best care possible. Um, and then the second thing is to definitely educate yourself on the birth process, what to expect postpartum, um, because things happen, right? Things don't always go as planned and you need to be prepared as to what the next steps are and what you can do um, so that you're not blindsided because things do happen. They're not bound to happen, but things happen and it's better that you're prepared and you know exactly what you would like to do instead of, you know, you're in this space where you're already in labor. You can't really, you know, think about what should I do um, so that you're you're prepared and that your team, your birth team is also prepared. Um, even if that team is just your spouse, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, three doulas and all your family. Like it can just be one person. It could be your best friend, could be whoever, right? So definitely um, controlling what you can control because obviously we can't control everything. Um, but preparing is super, super important. Well, that's awesome. And thank you for sharing that. Those, um, when I read that, I, it's exactly what I really believe in at my core of being prepared. Like I said, the honest preparedness, it's worthwhile preparing for plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, and all of the others. Um, so now sharing your story, everyone here, you're probably wondering, like, how can I you know, start unburying this experience. Um, I really think that your birth story deserves to be heard. It doesn't matter how, you know, um, hard it was. It wasn't, doesn't matter if it wasn't that bad. It doesn't matter if it was the greatest day of your life. Each of those stories deserve to be heard simply because you are worthy and you deserve to, to be heard and your experiences should be validated. So. With that, Cheyenne, what would you say is the number one reason that you do what you do um, in light of sharing stories and what it can do for, for women? Very simply put, because it needs doing. Um, it's very evident that we have a problem and, you know, people giving birth need support and they don't, they don't have it. So we need to simultaneously work on changing the system and preparing those about to end, to go through it um, so that they can avoid being traumatized, right? And to stop the traumatizing from those who are perpetrating it. Um, it's not fair and it's, it's not right and it needs to be fixed. Exactly. And what transformation do you witness when a birth story is unburied and understood? Yeah, so a lot of the um, the women that contacted me to participate in the study, like before I even started recording, they were like, thank you so much for doing this. Like, I just want to tell somebody, um, particularly it was those who had negative experiences. Like they really just wanted to tell someone because they, they had nowhere else to complain. Really. They didn't have, you know, there's no formal complaint system. If you have something negative happen to you. Um, and then when people do say something, you know, they get that, Oh, but you have a healthy baby. Oh, but your baby is fine. Um, and I feel like that is actually a form of gaslighting and we can't, that shouldn't be a response at all. We need to validate the experiences, good or bad, um, and really allow that person to feel heard and process what they've experienced because birth is not just the outcome of having a baby. It's the experience and everything leading up to it as well. Absolutely. And like I'm, I'm having a fangirl moment in the sense of um, knowing that there are people out there who are asking these questions and doing research in a field that is often it's highly under researched for many reasons. And I think a big part of it really is us pointing fingers at where the system is failing us. And again, I know women who have gone to you know, counseling therapy after their birth experiences to only really have that ex that 
experience explained away to them again about why maybe this happened or, you know, it was for your baby. And at the end of the day, that's not what we need. We need someone to hear our story as it is and not try to fix it. Um, and that being said, we can now talk about, you know, how we can help everyone here today. Because that's why why we're here. We're here to share the power of unburying your birth, but also help you figure out how in the world to actually do it. Um, so I wanted to highlight, and we will drop the links for each of these um, in the comments in a minute. Um, but Cheyenne is the admin at Black Births of Toronto. Um, I will let you, Cheyenne, if you want to kind of describe um, what that is and what opportunity it, it has for people perhaps here today or if they're wanting to read more stories. Yeah, so after I, I finished um, my research, I realized that, you know, there is a need that for a platform to people for people to be able to, to tell their stories, right? Um, and some people aren't comfortable, you know, just posting it on their personal sites and, and want to be anonymous, but still want to tell somebody, but you know, they don't want to be judged. So I wanted to create this platform where, um, Black Canadians would be able to share all of their reproductive and lactation stories, including birth and loss and abortion and everything related to that. Um, so I created the, an Instagram page and a Facebook page for people to do that. And I, I've had quite a few submissions, but I also recognize that it's very um, emotionally taxing to write down everything and to sort of relive the things that you'd rather not talk about. Yeah. Um, but there is a great sense of community that comes from that and the connections that, that can be made when you you can connect to other people who've had the same experiences as you. And it's also really important to share these stories because I don't believe that care providers go to work every day with the intention of traumatizing people or hurting people. But clearly there's a disconnect when when women are coming out of the hospital in not put together and doctors have no idea. So talking about these issues and, and sharing that there is a problem, uh, it's helpful for to make change in the long run. Absol absolutely. And I think um, there's a really, there's a powerful aspect of it being Canadian. Um, you know, in general, we don't have a lot of information or especially birth stuff quote unquote, coming out of Canada. So like, it's, it's incredible. And I, like I said, I really think you are, you're heading into some really exciting new frontiers in terms of being a pioneer in collecting this data through story. Um, and the one thing that I would love to offer to people here uh, today is something called the birth story inventory. So it's, um, I have a birth story bingo. So it's the Instagram version and you can share it in your story. But it really is the first step of taking a look at your birth experience from an objective standpoint. So it's just taking a bird's eye view and saying, yes, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. Oh, that happened too. And just doing check marks without it starts the process of looking and understanding and opening it all up without it being, um, like you mentioned, Cheyenne, that emotional taxing part. It doesn't mean the checklist is easy, but it's not the you know, completely pull everything out of the box in the middle of the, the floor, kind of unburying yet. It's just that surface level. Um, so those are two opportunities for everyone here today listening to, you know, explore further how and what does your story mean to you and how do you want to get it out there? And with that being said, um, you also might be wondering, how can you help dismantle this system? How can you make it better for someone else? How can you make it different for another mom? And that's where I would love to highlight supporting um, an organization called the Ontario Black Doula Society. Um, so they are currently fundraising for their startup costs. And um, their, their mission is to design and deliver more culturally competent education. So birth workers can provide more culturally competent care. So back to what Cheyenne said about you know, we don't think that care providers go to work every day with the hopes and dreams of traumatizing women. But the fact is, it happens. And I think um, the Black Doula Society is tackling this problem head on by saying one of the components here is culturally incompetent care. So if you're looking for a chance to, you know, be part of a radical change that is starting at a grass grassroots level in Ontario, 
this would be an awesome um, place to go. Um, I know Cheyenne is also a supporter of this organization. So if there was anything you wanted to, to add on top of that, Cheyenne, I would, um, would be happy to, for you to share that. Yeah, I think you said it all. Like, like I said, like it's really, really important that healthcare providers, anybody working with um, parents and families, like this is even to you know childcare workers. Like they need to, everybody needs to know and understand that the birth experience can influence so much, and it's not just that one day. It's your whole, the beginning of your relationship with your child or your children, right? So, it's definitely important that everybody is able to deliver that type of quality care. Oh, exactly. And with, with that, um, I am going to drop our contact info here. And we have a few minutes left if there's any, um, any questions. Um, for us, I wanted to remind you, it is possible to connect with us individually through um, the event attendees option um, or reach out at any of these um, you know, contacts, and I will also leave um, some links in the at uh, the chat as well. I'm just going to get back to um, the screen here, so I can stop sharing my screen, or so I can see everyone what I'm doing. Um, and perfect. There we go. So, if there's any questions, um, I will take a look at the the chat here, they are with me. Um, I'm seeing, we have lots of comments here. Okay, so everybody, I will drop those, um, the links to both um, for Cheyenne's information and mine, and also a direct link to the the Ontario Black Doula Society fundraiser. Um, and they're all going to be Oops. There we go. Uh, Thank you, Lindsay. Um, Lindsay just said thank you both for your work in this session. I'm not sure if you saw that, Cheyenne, but um, and I'm the wrong one. that I, I'm getting used to this too. And so I'm just going to send those links right now, guys. And um, Liette, if you are interested, um, if you go under Festival Goers or you double click on my name um, or Cheyenne's name, whoever you're looking to connect with, feel free. Um, you can contact us, reach out individually that way, and we can follow up. And I've realized I'm chatting right to the chat instead of the, the camera here. <laughs> and Jess, I see, um, you know, you, you hated your experience that you never want to do it again. Um, so yes, there's, there's opportunity. That's, that's why we're here. We want to, again, even if you never decide to go down that road ever again, um, there's opportunity to feel more kind of at peace with the one experience that you did have. Well, I, I just wanted to say again, thank you everyone. And thank you, Cheyenne. Um, this has been an absolute pleasure. And I am, like I said, I cannot wait to continue to watch where your, your research and your questions take you. Yes, thank you so much for inviting me to speak. Thank you both for your meaningful work and for being with us today. That was a really, um, it, was a, it was a different talk, but it was definitely amazing and really meaningful. So thank you both. And I wish you the best of luck in your continued research on the topic. And um, you've already put your contact details into the chat. So thank you, everyone. Please connect with Cheyenne and Emily for more information. Thank you so much. Thanks.